Welcome everybody. This is a special meeting of the Nevada Unified School District Board of Trustees. It's January 31st, 2023. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, our agenda is pretty simple. Uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting is a staff report. This is the Measure G Bond General Program status update, and hopefully maybe we'll provide some uh, direction to staff at the end. But let's, before we begin, let's approve our agenda, which is just that one item I said. Anybody? Okay, so first by Trustee Mack, a second by Trustee Millerick. All those in favor? Seven zero. Oops, that was me, sorry. Um, all right, we'll start with our staff report. And you should all have a, re and the revised version in front of you is strictly no changes in dollar amounts or line items. It was headings and reordering uh, the pages. So there's a little bit better flow is what we thought. And that was courtesy of Trustee Millerick. So thank you very much <laughs> for that. And we work together, yes, with Lois. <laughs> and Lois made the changes. Yes, Lois well, made the changes. Melissa made the oh, changes. Melissa. Made the changes, so it was a team effort. Yeah, <laughs> but I think it was well worth it, and it, it looks good, so thank you. I agree. Good evening, or good afternoon, I guess. Boy, it's going to be nice to not have to go home yeah. after dinner. Um, so today's plan, which I think you've all heard about, is um, I'm here with Todd Lee, from Greystone, and we're going to together present to you the current um, status financially of the bond, and that will be a fairly quick overview just to set the stage. But the majority of our the, what we'd like to have for discussion tonight is uh, the dollars that are not committed, encumbered, whatever the word is you use, that we are already set in motion to be spent. Um, so that you understand clearly what they're allocated for now, what you have the ability to change, and if you would like to change anything or hold something aside, and we'll talk about that at the end. Okay? Todd's going to start us off. Okay. Thank you for having me this evening. So our agenda is we'll run through the fund balance, the summary of expenditures and committed costs, uh, the, the Say, the bond board allocations, this is a holdover slide from the previous presentations. Available allocation of discretionary funds. Approved future projects. Um, these are projects you've approved, but they have not been, funds have not been committed to them yet. Um, summer 2023 construction, projects in design. The prioritized list of deferred maintenance projects. Uh, we'll talk about the elementary allocation potential projects list middle school allocation potential projects list, prioritized project list for Novato Charter School, next step, and then we'll open it up to questions. So the total bond revenues are $224.8 million, of which 152.7 have been expended as of 12-31-22. The Currently committed and encumbered uh, balance as of 12 21 is 38.1 million, leaving an available balance of $34 million. Summary of the expenditures. Of that 152.7, 3.16 was administrative costs. 23.7 has been spent on deferred maintenance projects. 98.18 on modernization new construction. Just over five million on infrastructure and safety, that's um, IT and cameras. Uh, athletic facilities, 16.33, and furniture, fixtures, and equipment, 6.2. Committed cost, most of these are encumbered. 1.61 um, on administrative, 8.98 on deferred maintenance, 8.94 on mod and new construction, 4.75 on infrastructure and safety, 10.28 on athletic, and 3.55 on FF&E. Um, this is the 
hold of her slide. Well, well, she might take it over. Okay. Um, so this is a slide that um, came from the last presentation, and we were asked to bring this up so you could be able to compare. We added a little bit to it, and it's showing um, that first column is the allocation, the original allocation, and then what has been expended. And then there's that word committed, basically encumbered, spoken for already in the pipeline to be paid. And then the fourth column is the combination of expended and committed, the total project cost. And then the, the what's basically left, cost variance, for each of the allocations. And that comes back down. And it, you'll see from slide to slide in this presentation, it ties. So there's 34 million that um, is not committed or spent yet. And you saw that on an earlier slide. Okay, make sense? Trustee Gasson. So two clarifying questions in my, my message to Ashley about the committed column. So there's another slide, and you can answer this whenever it's easier. There's another slide that says um, 17 million of projects in design, which I assume is in that committed bucket, correct? Some yes, some no, because there are some that are in design that we can walk away from, yes? Yes. Yes. So yes and no. Okay, so I guess... My so, we, so we've sliced it a few different ways on these slides. Okay, so I guess because what I was trying to ascertain was what is in the committed. Um, I mean, I know that the 500000 that's in the variance, I assume, for middle school is the money we committed to doing for Hamilton Middle School, and then the million is the um, charter school for other allocation, correct? Yes. So yes. with the committed stuff, though, I was just curious what what is rolled in there, like, well... I, I don't know if you're going to explain it later, but the two the two middle school fields I would assume are in there somewhere. Yes, yes. yes. But then, like, it's a lot of money compared to the 17 million of the projects going. So the remaining would be whatever is still. To the be other finished. committed is projects that are in process right now that we haven't paid all the bills on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ross. Could you go to slide number six? Is that backwards? Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. Yes. Yes. Okay, so now there's two slides. This is um, one of the adjustments from the uh, package you had before. These are um, things that are allocations that have, I'm going to go forward just to quickly show you. These are allocations. A lot of these are money we're going to be d discussing tonight, things that we need to figure out what we're going to do with it. The extra money is one way of looking at it. And then these are also discretionary, but they have been, they are projects, these are all deferred maintenance projects that you have approved in the past, but there's they're all for the future. So there's no um, formal activity on them. They aren't committed other than, as you'll see in a future slide, they're important deferred maintenance, and we are recommending these all be done. But in truth, you could decide not to do some of these right now. I'm, I'm going to just clarify one more thing and backing up a little bit. So 34 is the column E, Ross's column E, 34 million is the number that is sitting there for us to figure out what to do with. Okay. Am I correct to say slides 7 and 8 add up to that? Yes, you are. All right. Just want to make sure. <laughs> we did a lot of footing on these slides just to make it logical. Just want to make sure yep. the story's straight. Yep. 
So that's why theoretically these could be, you could say, um, especially as you look at the prioritization that we have in another slide, you might decide, well, some of those ones that aren't as urgent, we might want to put off for a while and do something else with the money. But at this point, these are all in the pipeline to be done in future years. But we're not committed to it using the language we had before. Well, to be clear, though, slide eight is stuff that's already been approved. We're already doing of the no. 34. Well, it says approved future. It's approved back when you okay. just said these okay. are the deferred maintenance projects we want to do with this bond. But okay. we haven't moved forward with any of the contracts or bidding or design or any of it on any of these. Okay. Yeah, we had a whole board report on deferred maintenance yeah. and it was, okay. I'm just trying to remember. So the, the, the clarity is that the word on page eight, the word approved does not mean board approved to proceed with construction. Correct. It, it means, means board approved. put in some scope list somewhere. Correct. Some afternoon a year ago. Perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to go, just going to go back to this one just Thank to you. look at it a little more. And we'll get into detail in these on a future slide. But just to compare them to the deferred maintenance projects, which are actual projects, whereas this is holding pots of money that has not been assigned to things yet. Okay. And so then this is just for information, projects for the summer of 2023, a lot of these are in design, but not all of them in, on your list that says design because some of them have, are in process already um, and are already um, we're working towards. Um, anything else we want to say about this slide? I think it's more for so, information so, than anything. Clarification, these, everyone on, every item on this list is a project. Marina yes. Oaks Classroom Toolkit is sort of not quite a project, but is that a project? These all have specific amount of monies at scope. Yes, And yes. they've got a number assigned to them and they've got a GL code and they're, they're being worked. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll just add, this slide hasn't changed since October. The presentation in October, it hasn't changed from what I gathered. So no, that's just and I would another say that's to, true, yes. Where there's been just no adjustments. Slicing and dicing, yeah. right. Yeah, and I just did some math and just my aha moment, if it helps everybody else. Slide six, every line on slide six is on slide seven with the exception of the 25 million, which is actually 3 million. But if you take that 3 million, add the 22.2 .2 on slide eight, you get 25.2. So. Aha moment, thank you. I'm glad it worked for you. <laughs> that was pretty entertaining. <laughs> okay, um, and here's another little bit projects in design, a little bit different than um, projects for the summer because some of the design has. I get confused here. <laughs> Yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. Yes. So these are projects that are at the design level only. They don't have any contracts that have been signed or approved. Any no building contracts. You right? Building. You mean building contracts? Yes. Correct. So again, theoretically, you could choose to say, eh, but. Not likely, I'm not, I'm thinking, but theoretically, you have the ability to do that. Aren't these the ones that we approved in October, I think it was? This was the summer, The beginning right? to start the process, yes. So we technically already approved all of these. But, the, but contracts haven't come to you, Got and it. just depending on what okay. your priorities are, Got we're it. just trying to show you the different levels okay. of where things are and what you might want to um, pull back or not pull back on. It, is it true that every project on page 10, projects in design, is also on proje summer project list? Oh, except for the... Um, oh, the, pow the new transformers and, and power switching gear that is... Well, that's we have we to have start. No we, we have, have to, to start do, with PG&E very early, but that won't happen till the next. Oh, okay, summer. but other than that, projects in design are a subset of pro the summer projects, with that one exception. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. All right, and this is something that you had asked for at the last meeting. This is a prioritized list of deferred maintenance projects. Um, the There's one with the most urgency, number one, and then it ranks down from there. So this is where we were saying that maybe there might be something towards the bottom of the list. You aren't that interested. You'd rather do something else. But these are, have all been identified as things that need to happen at some point in the district. And it is not an exhaustive list. There are many more things. Um, this is what was chosen originally as the most important things to be done with this bond. And to be clear, really, slide 11 is just slide 8 prioritized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Except for, I, um, it looks like... Not that it makes that big of a difference, but it looks like number one is already, the top one is already on our projects and design. Yes, and it, because it's high priority, and we have to get, we have to start talking to PG&E. Okay, but it's, into, so it's, it's on the prioritized list, but it's already being dealt with in the projects under design. Well, yes, the very first baby steps okay. to get to it. No, no real work has been done on that. To, to be clear, my understanding is we're adding air conditioning and a, and a performing arts center, and that transformer that's out there is not adequate. And if we don't, do, we've got to not do something else as well. We have to, it, it brings into question the ability to bring air conditioning on the campus. Which is why it has a one. <laughs> we have no choice. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, right. the reality is impinging itself on our thinking here. Thank you. Okay. All right. So elementary site allocation list. So this is back on your list of the allocations. There's $2.5 million. Um, we had talked about this before that we were going to start to look at this as a standards. What do all of our elementary schools need to have? And we came up with a list with some various possibilities in our minds as we're looking at it. Replace, repair, play structures, and shade structures are the two most important um, things that all elementary schools should have. Play, playgrounds in good order and a shaded place to eat lunch. Um, we've already figured out that $2.5 million will probably not repair all of our playgrounds, um, nor, and especially when you take that and talk about shade structures, it won't do it all. What we're suggesting is if, and there's one more thing I want to add, this is also the place perhaps where we start to talk about safety. We've had conversations in the past of what more do we want to do besides cameras? Is it fencing? Is it you know locking in the fronts of schools, the whole school? Um, what do we want to do about locks? What do we want to do about lights? So that isn't really dealt with anywhere. So I want to plant the seed that that this is the time to start thinking about that. And um, it doesn't necessarily have to be here, but this is one um, slide that could lend itself to that. So with. With that kind of put aside, depending on how you want to handle that, um, one of the things we would suggest here is that we get someone out to evaluate all of our play structures um, and give us a uh, list of what needs to be repaired to make them safe. We already know that the surface on some of them is torn and needs to be replaced, and we're pretty sure that there's some um, repairs that need to happen to make them as safe as they could be. We know there's at least two or three um, spots that we need shade structures where kids don't have a spot to eat lunch. Um, so we would do an inventory, basically talking to the principals to find out what their needs are there. Um, and then once those two things were done, we could come back to you, prioritize list, total list, and we could figure out um, where that, where if if you still want to stay with 2.5 million, and how you would want to allocate that for those projects, and also give you time to think about the whole safety piece, which will filter through as we talk about the other money that is uh, around for um, allocation. Okay, Can you just clarify with play structures. I just want to make sure we don't get the wrong impression that our play structures are they're they're checked on a regular on an yes. annual basis. Yes. Yes, but they need refreshing. Yes. They need okay. modernization. We not need, that they're unsafe no, in any. No, and you are correct. All right. um, and we need to um, evaluate 
uh, what our needs are for TK. Yes. Okay. Because we're getting younger kids um, coming in. We have to figure out what play structures are appropriate for four-year-olds versus some of the older kids. For me, that just throws a whole wrench in the whole thing. I mean, I know we need, is there no, and I haven't followed the funding for TK very much because we have the TK program and we don't need to build out facilities necessarily, but is there an opportunity somewhere that we would be able to get funding for that kind of thing? Because I don't know. Yes and no. The funding I've seen that specifically for that favors school districts with a higher um, uh, unduplicated count. Right. But as I've mentioned to you before, and you may not recall, we have uh, $2 million in our Fund 25 that can be used because Fund 25 is for expanding populations. So it makes sense to use that money. So that could go a long way in taking care of any place structures we need for TK. Okay, I kind of like that. Okay. Okay, any more questions or clarification on this slide? Yes, I looked at the prioritized list and I noticed when you, that the HVAC lines added together are more than half or about half of the total. You're talking about the deferred maintenance? Y yes, pardon me, I'm on page 11, yes. Okay. Yep, that, uh, the, no, that's just that one note for now, thank you. Okay. We know the prices on HVAC have gone up, yes? <laughs> We've experienced that. Okay, um, this just to stay consistent, this is a new slide, um, middle school site allocation. We've put aside $500,000 for the middle school at Hamilton, and they have said loudly and clearly that they would like to um, put that towards um, getting an artificial turf field. It's not nearly enough, but they have um, fundraising that they want to do, are doing, um, so at this point, their preference is to earmark it for the f a future field. Yes. Okay. All right. And this I'm going to have to look at my paper because I can't read it. And we've talked about this one quite a bit. We, it was a big discussion in the October meeting. The charter school which at this point um, we had talked about putting a million dollars aside and at one point it was for the charter school, for um, C Street, and I can't remember what the third was, there was something else. Um, it's pretty much now focused on the charter school through our discussions. This was a list uh, that came out of a meeting I had with several members from stakeholders in the charter school, and uh, then Greystone put costs to it, and then the charter school took the list back and ranked it. Uh, one thing I want to say, the security cameras is their number one item, uh, but this price put on the security cameras does not include any infrastructure that we might need to do to support those cameras. And we're not, we haven't really done an evaluate, thorough evaluation, so we're not sure what that is. Put a guess on it. Um, we had improving the reliable Wi-Fi at three thousand And that, that would, would the fiber okay. So perfect. You need to add the security camera and the Wi-Fi. Just those It'd two be numbers. Two fifty. And see, as you can see, we put a line under the first four because that hit a million. But that would take out then the place structure, if that's how they want to do it. So is that also I'm um, using like, can they tap into the deal that we've got with what we're doing, or was, would this be like would be would the they be able to take advantage of anything that we've done with security cameras? We are, we are, yes, we are actually um, organizing to have our consultant go out and assess their campus to figure out a plan okay. for cameras I was for their like campus. A, you know, by by this many, you get a because we're already doing. Yes, it would we would do it as part of our okay, larger thanks. purchase. Is 
is there um, any desire to uh, have questions for Vicki? Nikki, not Vicki, Nikki. Oh, she's public, public comment? comment. Okay. Yeah. So okay. We'll Perfect. just wait. Okay. So your we're finished. Presentation and okay. Then. Well, we're just about there. So, and I'll just point out that everything they've asked for um, totals three million dollars, and a large amount of the dollars there uh, reflect refurbishing the portables, floors, ceilings, uh, siding, yeah. roofs, windows. Basically, everything having to do with older portables. So she'll be speaking later, so maybe we can have that conversation then. Is that a good time, you think? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, final step, final slide, next steps. So we are asking um, you to give us some direction on where we should go to earmark these last dollars. Um, one of the th things on the list of allocations is 1.79 million uh, that's still in the IT infrastructure holding budget. We are recommending that stay there. Um, there will be future needs for switches and various infrastructure and that seems like a, a reasonable amount of money to hold for future need. You're just not clear what's going to happen with IT. Um, we are asking to consider increasing the um, contingency budget to be 5% of the total remaining budget, which would add eight to $900,000. And the main purpose for that, as you've all witnessed, is to cover escalation as we go into these projects and run into, oh my goodness, look what's happening there. Um, we want you to tell us if we continue on with the deferred maintenance projects as listed. Um, are there any changes there? And then um, just information on the elementary school site allocation, Novato. And then beyond that, we have, you can see up at the top, there's, allocate, there's money in deferred maintenance that has not yet been allocated. So that is money that you could allocate towards something. And there's the balance in the classroom toolkit allocation because we have are taking on the expense of Chromebooks at the district level outside of the bond. Uh, so you have $5 million there I, I'm, that- I, You've lost me out. You said up at the top and I was- I'm sorry. I think about that toolkit allocation on slide 15, I think. That two, two when you, one. balance of classroom toolkit? When yes. When you say that up at, the top, up at the top of the page I'm yes. looking at, not up at the top of the report? Oh uh, yes, I'm sorry, at the top of the page we're on, at the last page. Okay. Thank you, that helps. I was went, started flipping back and I... No, don't do that. Um, so there's 5.1 and I want to remind, so we have the safety that's not really listed and you also have indicated a pretty strong desire to increase, um, to add to the uh, middle school fields. And we're calculating $750,000? Is that on top of the five million each assigned to that? To get the um, the rubber the, the track. So that isn't in the revised five million number. There's a f the, no. Okay, because I thought that number. Okay, because right because okay yeah this project in design has them at five point four and five that's million. the original amounts that were there and what we've done is we've put out the bid and had that um, the added track as a altern alternate. So we're waiting to see what it comes in at in the bids. It's a half a million for each track. Is that what was that your ad? I think three fifty three seventy five. Seventy five is based on the CMAS contract. Is okay. So the track itself is 375 each and moving the fencing from around the perimeter of the field to the outside of the track is another 50,000 for each school. Okay. Yes, Trustee Gasson. I have a clarification on the program contingency. The, um, so you have on slide six, there's a program contingency of 917,000 yes. and then 
we want to add to that. So add, but when we get the quotes and stuff, it always has a contingency in it. Do you take the contingency out of here, or this is <coughs> on top of? This is program level contingency. So this is um, to cover um, drastic unforeseens if we run into uh, a soils condition at a site, for example, that would not have been anticipated, a or a roof at Rancho, <laughs> or um, should you decide to add a project to uh, the list or modify a, a project significantly, um, this is kind of like the, the, the last ditch uh, if things really go bad. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. a separate contingency built into each project. Right. Well, that's why I was asking, because I know that when we, like, we approve the 4.25 for a field thing, that there's a percentage of that that's contingency, but you're saying this is like, if we want to add, <laughs> Jack, there's this extra, there's, yeah, you can't do it or something. So that's the extra on top if you, if you go through and have already used the contingency for the actual project. Yeah. So, for example, things where program contingency would contingency would come into play is the Rancho roof is a, a prime example. We start off to do the HVAC and we discover we've got a problem with the roof that wasn't originally budgeted. So okay. then we would go to a program level contingency to make up that difference. Thank you. All right. So you're, you're done. Okay. So um, steps to move forward. This is where it gets a little tricky. Um, I have some public comment I can hold off, or would you like to listen to that first? Or I thought maybe we'd get into our conversation a little bit, and maybe that might change their comments to us, but that's fine. We'll, um, I have three comment cards, and I three, see three individuals sitting out there. Um, so Louise Koenig will be the first, then Nikki Lloyd, and then Alan Harris. And you both have, all of you have three, you have three minutes each, and the timer is right over there. Hi. Hi, thank you for letting me speak tonight. I am here with, um, Mike Casper's um, support, he, and I asked him about this idea, and he said definitely go forward because it's something they need. Anyone who has dropped off their student for school or tried to pick them up knows what a horrendous ch charge that is because it's not easy with all the traffic. Most schools do not have any options to improve that situation. However, at San Jose Middle School, you do have an option. You have solar panels that are sitting at the school with nothing underneath them. Most schools have them covering their parking lot for shade or, or you know, to be protected from the weather. At San Jose, it's, they're sitting there with an open field underneath them. The traffic that comes from Southern Marin to drop off their students conflicts with the, stu the traffic that's coming from the area around Nevada High, not to mention the traffic coming off of 101 that's going, trying to get a faster way to San Rafael on the side roads. If we had a drop off underneath that solar paneling, like a bus stop where a, uh, the people could go in, drop off their students, drop, leave and go on out with a waiting area for students that's protected from the weather, from the rain and the shade, it would alleviate a tremendous amount of problems traffic wise for everybody who goes by San Jose Middle School in the morning or in the afternoon. You've got those solar panels and they're sitting over an empty field with nothing that is servicing anything. If you aren't going to put a parking lot underneath it, at least make it a drop-off area for students. And again, I'm here with my Casper support for possibly that. I'd, it would probably be, you know, making a driveway entrance with the gutter and then paving and maybe putting some benches. Um, it wouldn't take that much to, uh, you know, alleviate a huge problem. And like I say, you've got a gold nugget. Take advantage of it. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for all the work that you do. Thank you for including the Novato Charter School in the bond. I know that was a big step and it was very much appreciated by our families. Uh, as you're probably all well aware of, close to 100% of our families live within Novato Unified School District. So they are all Novato taxpayers. I had two primary questions and the one I believe you answered. So on page seven, where it lists 
Novato Charter School and C Street. I've seen that a lot since 2016. So some of you have been with me since 2016 and this dialogue's been going on. And I'd really love clarification. So whatever number is decided upon, is that for just the charter school or for the charter school and C Street? And it sounds like that is just for the charter school. So that's um, my first comment and just hoping that that's very clear at the end of this meeting. The second one is you can see our list and you can see that it comes up to $3 million. And I do not think that we're being extravagant about any of this. A lot of it is deferred maintenance on buildings that actually belong to Nevada Unified School District. Some of the buildings are ours. Um, and a lot, and most, most of them are safety. Most of them are really safety issues. When I look at a $222 million bond, and you have to check my math. Hopefully somebody's checking my math. But, okay, <laughs> so when I look at $222 million, and last time I checked ed data, ed tech data, it was, NUSD was at 1,700 students. Is that true about? Not seven. So, I'm sorry, seven. 7,000. 7,000, okay. 7,000 students. And then we add on the charter school students, I sort of rounded up and added 300, divide that by, or divide 300, $222 million by the total students, then multiply that by 270 students, you come up with a lot more than $3 million. And I know that there's a difference between high school needs and junior high needs as they're more expensive to educate, but I, I would just really encourage the board to, do right by the all taxpayers in Novato, including those who have chosen to send their children to the Novato Charter School, and uh, and look at what our needs are, which again are primarily deferred maintenance and safety. So, thank you. And thank you, Lois, for all her work. She's a mm -hmm. joy to work with. Really appreciate it. Now it's coming. Alan Harris, old guy in the back of the room. <laughs> um, I have a question and a suggestion. Um, the question is that uh, if you add the 23.7 23 million that already has been expended for deferred maintenance, which comes from the very first slide, it's what, part what? of the 152 million that you've already spent. Okay. And it, it includes, to the slide 11, which is the 22.21 million list of deferred maintenance projects that are prioritized. Um, are there any other known cost estimates for deferred maintenance in addition to those two sums? There are many projects. I don't know that we have a cost associated with them. Let Todd talk, speak to that. Don't have anything current, but you're uh, significant and it gets worse every year. So I think the last update that we did, there was something like 70 million in, in other pending projects and that number increases year on year. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> My second uh, remark, is uh, semi-political in nature. And um, I'm sure that you're familiar with the political term of kicking the can down the road. Anybody not know what I'm talking about then? <laughs> well, we're at a critical moment, I think, with respect to what we um, ought to be doing as a district. And other than kind of emergency projects off of this list, my strong recommendation is that um, the Measure G can be kicked down the road until you have selected a new superintendent to run the district. And uh, getting into this sort of a, um, a topic on, on Measure G at this point in time um, 
may severely interfere with other things that are necessary to do, like raising and protecting our parcel tax probabilities after this year. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That concludes the public comment. Um, all right, uh, board members, you have the next steps in front of you. Yes, Trustee Mack? May I? Yeah, go ahead. So I'm looking at page 15, which I think is the real, uh, and thank you for putting together the presentation because it does come to a conclusion on page 15 and everything leads up to that nice and cleanly, uh, at least once I start moving the numbers around. But generally speaking, um, and I just, I double checked, but if you look at page 15, all those numbers sum up to 34.1 million, <laughs> go figure, on the very first page. And like my, my first comment was, column E that Ross referred to, 34 million, is the nut we're trying to crack today to figure out what we're gonna do with that 34. Um, I'm gonna put out my thoughts on some of it and then uh, kind of hold off till later on further comment. But I kind of work my way from the bottom on this list. The 22.2, I see no reason to change that. It's something we've been doing. We're, we're on our way to doing it. They're all things I think we all agree need to be done. The prioritization looks right to me. I might just perhaps say the siting at Novato High is not a priority four. It's really, really bad. But anyway, <laughs> we can fight that fight later. Um, so I would point out that the very last bullet, 22.1, I think there's no change. I think we should just, and my approach perhaps today is to tackle this in four separate motions. One, go after that first one, 22.1. Do we agree with it? Say yes or no. And then the next one, talk about the 1.79. Same thing. Do we agree with it? Yes or no. And then um, we work up to the, um, the, the 800, 900, although I'm not so sure that's a little squishy. Maybe we get into the, the top section before we get into that 800, 900. But that's what I propose. And, you know, if you want, I can even make a motion on the first part, the 22. I, I, I don't want to make, okay. we're, this is not discussion action. The board is not providing action. So okay. that would be the vote. Um, we're just providing direction. Got it. And they'll bring it back for... Okay. So, and I agree with you that I, that's kind of where I was going to start with the bottom up because those are kind of like staff gave us direction on uh, two of those, some recommendations on the five percent reserve and the IT. They kind of said that's what they're recommending to keep that as is. So I agree with you in in that way. Um, do we want to start there, like uh, as a board? Is there consensus with the deferred? Well, I'll start. Is there consensus with the? Um, I'll start with the 5% remaining. Is there a consensus with the contingency raising that? I would, I would rather talk about the ones that are specific before we start talking about reserve. Things like IT res budget reserve or balance, deferred balance classroom. Those balance numbers are less specific. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in I was just clearer trying to knock about off the some specifics of the ones. before I start making general. Yeah. Summary. How, how about the two bottom ones? The, so staff's recommendation for IT infrastructure to keep that money there for future future projects. The one point seven nine. Before we start concluding individuals, I would like to have a general conversation about the other issues before, so we okay. all heard the same comment. Because right. I wouldn't be prepared to commit to those until we're, we're not. Okay. It's just a, it's just to get a consens a consensus of the board, uh, an idea of where we are. It's you know that's all I'm asking. And the deferred maintenance projects, um, yeah. Because I'm I'm as Trustee Mac expressed, I'm sort of in the same ballpark of uh, going with staff's recommendation on those and with the deferred maintenance. But yes, we have to have a more lengthier conversation on the other items above. So. If nobody else wants to weigh in, we will dive into those then. Mm -hmm. um, the elementary, do you want me to start at the top? The elementary school site allocation. You have a slide on that. So that would be the best way to start there. You, slide 12. Thank you for the number. I'm just got them pulled apart here, so. So they, the staff has made uh, some suggestions there. And one that Lois added was the safety is where we can consider that. So, yes. so what we about have it? had that conversation here yeah, at this there's point. There's $250 million. Ooh. 
2.5. Oh, two, oh, damn. Two, <laughs> two, million, two million. So do we know how that divides across eight elementary schools or 15 and campuses? Or originally, the thought was, just a thought, that Linwood and Olive got more than their fair share with the modernization. That's right. So it would be down to six. Six. So you're thinking this is six elementary schools, not the charter school, not those two, six others. Correct. Uh, Trustee Miller, are you? I, I'm, I'm. I have some questions because I, I haven't heard anything from any elementary staff principals that said this is what they want so well do we have i thought my understanding was that we were going to make a suggestion on what fundamental things should happen in each of our schools which kind of moves away from olive and what did you say olive and linwood Gullet. linwood i i looked at this or i thought uh, my understanding was we wanted to have a list of standards and i would like to make sure that our i mean they're safe but our play structures if there's Correct. repairs to be done at all right. schools i don't care what happened i want to make sure that i've been to all the elementary schools and kids are dying because there's no shade and we can't every time i hear a site say they want to attach a, a sale to the building i'm like oh i already know that we can't because i dealt with that at pv we were not allowed to put when uh, the sales up attached to the building so for me i read this more as making sure I would take at least the the top two is being uh, things that all of our schools should have um, partly too because it becomes um, an equity thing when mm -hmm. some sites can afford to do things and other sites can't so I would like to not be able to not walk into a site and say oh, we don't have enough money to fix this for safety or for our kids to eat in the shade so that would be how I would that's a good that's a good point I, I don't think we want to take this and divide this up six ways the dollar amount and leave olive and linwood out of it because they've already gotten a modernization but they may need a play structure just as much as all the other sites do i am suggesting what comes back to us as a standard yeah playground configuration or not just playground but just all the all yeah standards for our elementary school yeah. We, and that makes sense to me if we say here's and what i understand is that we do have place structures in other than perhaps tk we have the proper place structures at all of our elementary schools it's just a matter of their condition mm -hmm. but we do not have the same shade structures at every school and the seating and the benches and all that uh, these are really good standards from my perspective, for an elementary school. Can you turn your mic on? Oh, sorry. Forgot mm -hmm. we were on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think these are the ones that have, the principal's been talking about. I think it's the ones that um, our team has been talking about and to standardize across the schools. And I think it's important that we do that. And now some people might not need as much as the others because they have something that's more recent. But um, the shade structures are really important and the seating is really, and the, they're, they all are. And they, they include safety um, uh, plans for each of those. So if the playground structure is sound, then we don't need to worry about it. But if it's not, we need to, to, to get it in a safe uh, working operational. My only system. experience in this immediate area was years ago, we had deteriorating asphalt to the point it wasn't safe to play on because it was alligatoring, I think is how you say the word, and it coming up and the kid I mean you could walk across it but anything more than that it was not safe to play on and we repaired that asphalt I think most of it the last bond measure but I'll bet you there's more I mean that's a cost item that's significantly pricier than a place structure so we need to think about it uh, yes um, and also you mentioned um, that other safety pieces are not in here as well. So, you know, as we're touring sites and having conversations around the placement of fences and whether or not we want to raise fences, those are also not Correct. included here. Um, but I would be curious about, you know, what kind of standards we have beyond these particular pieces, but around fencing, um, you know, what kind of standard or expectation should we have with fencing that comes around our schools? Um, 
you know, access points to our students and how we are kind of keeping our spaces safe. I know we've got security cameras going in, but lighting, we were at Linwood today and we were talking about the need for just lighting, different light fixtures around. Um, some of their light fixtures weren't working and they were interested in putting new ones in. Um, do we have any kind of standard as a district around those safety pieces, what we'd like to see in terms of fencing and closing off campuses? Things around that? We have not had those discussions. That is a discussion I would love to have with all of you. I, I, I know the district I came from in Windsor, there was a standard that every school except the high school would be totally fenced in, which means at all times um, to keep it safe. That um, I'm not sure how that would be accepted here in Novato. Um, with the way the community uses this, the school sites. So that would be a big discussion. Do we just lock it up during the school day and then open it back up? I think there's some districts that do that. Um, so we have not, to answer your question, we have not had those discussions. There is no set standard at this point. Yep. Trustee Jacobson. But we do have safety assessments in the works for every site, right? Yes. We have the ones for secondary. Um, that includes the middle schools? No, that's what's coming. Elementary and middle schools, what is guidepost timeline? I think what we discussed was in the second quarter. Okay, second quarter of this year. And that's beyond cameras, that's more? It, the assessment includes everything, everything. yes. Okay. It, focus, it has, yes, that's the assessment we're using for the camera design in at the two high schools, and we will use it at all the other sites, but it includes other features of safety also. I think understanding those needs and associated costs would help us to okay. create any kind of benchmarks that we want to implement. Okay, great. Yeah. That is direction. Yeah. I think safety for our elementary or all of our districts is a top priority for this board. So seeing that report would be key for us in some of this discussion. Yeah. A, a side question, is the budget for the cameras that are going on the elementary schools included in the IT budget already? Yes. So this is the work beyond cameras, we're not Correct. jeopardizing the, Correct. affecting the camera process as we've already laid it out okay thank you for the clarification okay I'm a little and, and uh, you know this is we always this board always has us trouble with this so I really need There's staff to kind of help in getting us to a spot because I think we're a little bit in the unknown all of us here exactly what do you well, want us to say yes we want you to replace play structures well, what you we, do, what, yes we want you to do shade structures what, what Julie just said if yeah. everyone agrees with that kind of puts a hold on everything. Because if you want to institute true, uh, significant safety at all of the school sites, that won't be inexpensive. No, right. And so we need to uh, figure out what that cost could be and then make decisions around that. Now, I would also, what, I mean, we can go ahead with evaluations of the elementary schools and do the inventory of the shade structures. We can have someone come in and look at all the place structures. We can move forward with that if that fits with what you want. But we can also move forward with the whole safety piece um, because yes, that is yeah, an yes. important piece. Now, I will also say, I personally, and as the CBO here. I don't want to leave Novato Charter in the lurch at this point. I think we need to come up with some concrete um, answers for them. Okay, so I would say for elementary, I say we focus on the safety piece and continue to move forward with um, an analysis of our play structures and the, sh the shade structures. Okay. So that I'm, would be my. Are, are you proposing we I'm leave proposing. it? We leave, we leave it at the two point five million for right now. Not for change right now. the number. Yeah, and we have okay. in fund twenty five. There's another two million that you said. That's kind of a place just sitting there. Uh, for I'd like to, I would like to talk well, about those extra money you said at some point, but I'm fine with what you propose. Leave it at the two point five million. Okay. But I would like to have us have a conversation about those extra monies that are. Okay, so let's just put that off to the side for now. Let's just stick with this 2.5 for elementary. If there's consensus, we'll 
I'll go with that. Okay. Everybody? I keep looking at Ross, but <laughs> I want to make sure I see everybody. Okay. Um, just so we can move a little bit more here. Um, the middle school. Um, let's go with that one because that was next on our next steps list. We have the Hamilton has their artificial turf is what they would like to and then they're going to commit some other funds either through donations or uh, somebody who's going to help fund that. Um, so I am good with leaving that as is. Yes. We have an estimate of what an artificial <laughs> turf at Hamilton would cost all up. We do. Yeah, and I think they've gotten that, right? Okay. Are they talking about the big? I'm not sure. Or right just there. the little field, the little grass in the back? No, I think, no, it's the big it's field. The, it's it's the, the big the field. The two baseball fields, yeah. which gets used by Little League and... Yeah. But to be clear, Todd, your your four million was the the entire front field, including the little league field. I'm guessing so that that's that whole space. That whole space yeah. that right. Linear space down the back, it's just over 100,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Wait, down the back. I'm think along the front on Nave Drive. We're in the same place. Okay. <laughs> okay. Back it's all front. perspective. Okay. Just, okay. Just turn around. And Got it. Okay. And then, but if instead you just turf the equivalent of a soccer field, and that's it, just a, a rectangle within that. Uh, it depends on what size soccer field, but um, for uh, um, your average soccer field, it's right around eighty thousand square feet. Okay. So it's still a lot. Yeah, it's all still right. In, in yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of fundraising. It, it doesn't yeah. have a track around it, unlike the other two middle schools, but it is a full field, I believe. Is it a full it's a regulation soccer field? It's a regulation soccer okay. field. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just to have clarity for folks who haven't been out there, that field is an absolute unmitigated yeah. disaster. Yeah. It's, it's, a it's, mess. it's gophers everywhere. Yeah. It's lumpy. It's not even level. Yeah. It's, it's a mess. I, I agree they made the right choice to spend the money, but it's, they're just on their way to $4 million, So, I would agree with setting the money aside. If that's what they ask for, I would agree with that request. We've been holding it for the last couple of years, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to change that on them, but we well, could. But well, I mean, we have a new board here. priority, yeah. Seven yeah, new yeah, members, no, so, yeah, yeah. It's not just me. I'm just, yep. okay, is there consensus? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. I, so yes. I'm, I'm totally good with that. I just, I'm still, like, absorbing $4 million. So I, I guess my only question would be if we do keep that aside, I mean, it, do we have any time limit on when we have to, say okay we need to do this or not with the 500,000 I believe what, what would be in order is a discussion with the admin over there as well as the group that's trying to raise the money and see if this is in their ability to do perhaps it is perhaps they're miracle workers I was workers. thinking more like we can hold the money for a year or two but I mean like, yeah, at some point it's can't. like we can't not for five right? years probably no. I'm assuming okay. yeah we held the San Ramon multi-purpose room money for about 20 years. Yeah, I was just, I was just <laughs> so, so maybe 20 years. The field would cost then. <laughs> okay, there's consensus with that to continue to earmark it Thank for you. Hamilton. Uh, now, the charter school, <laughs> we have that. You have the list of their... Yeah, can, can I make one point before we start about the charter school? Mm -hmm. On this page that says next steps, the next two line items aren't projects at all. They're just available balances. That is correct. So the, the, so the last topic we're talking about is the charter school or maybe down here on the second half. But those two line items are available balances. So with that in mind, I'd love to have the charter school conversation. Okay. So question. Yes. Um, and this is going to Nikki's uh, concern about C Street always showing up in the title, and I get right. that. Right. Um, but I do look at line three, perimeter fencing, gate at the main entrance, and new security screening on back fence. Just want to make absolutely clear, that is for the campus? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not C Street. No. 
Okay. No, we've taken care of that with different funds. Okay, got it. Just want to make sure. And uh, I'll just kind of chime in with my thoughts. I think we should take this all the way through priority two, which adds up to 1.241 million. Then you get into priority three and four, and while a lot of those are good, they're just big numbers. Would we want to include them in our safety assessment since some of these items on their list are the same ones that are concerns at all the other sites and then have a bigger conversation about safety or is that not the move in this case? That's certainly a way to look at it. I, I mean, they're to closer to the freeway than other campuses. A, a, somebody who pulled off the freeway would likely end up at a campus near the road, the highway. That's a concern. I mean, I, I don't, I think that they're, they're not imagining their issues. Yeah, I think if we're doing an analysis, you know, a security with all of our sites, why would we not include them? It just makes perfect sense to me. I mean, unless am I over, we not thinking that through or to add them to the, I think it's a choice. Yeah, we can so do I that. Think, we can just yeah. go back and say, add the yeah. chart. Yeah. But okay. to be clear, the stuff that's already prioritized is all, is most security cameras the wi-fi for the cameras the fencing what else would there be Security. those are the main those are the main items right so i mean regardless of how that audit comes out the priorities are already addressing security so i, I guess where i'm going is i don't want to slow down what needs to be done if, if it's going to mean that we have to do a, a district-wide you know security audit the priorities here are already pretty much all secure. I mean, anything you could do is already there. Well, the, well the, I think the assessment is in process, and Nevada Charter is included with the assessment that we're doing. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. I didn't know that. Sorry. Or you probably said it, and I didn't. I guess my thought behind that is, in some ways, could be beneficial to the charter school site in that if we're putting a standard and we're going to cover that cost across the board, then it might free up some funds for them for more on their list. Mm -hmm. But those are things that are in the future and not tangible right now in this conversation so mm -hmm. and the truth is i mean you if you're going with that frame of mind you could take care of what their top priorities are and once you've decided the safety you could think okay well then we should give this much more to the charter that's that's an, a nice middle ground yeah. also okay yes trustee miller um in regard to the this charter school and the wi-fi but it's more than the Wi-Fi. The, the cameras and the Wi-Fi devices all depend upon a solid network infrastructure. And we've funded that in other districts. And I believe the consultant who's actually doing the work out there has been involved in the IT consulting as well. I, I'm not sure who you're, which, who you're using. But you need, you need switches that deliver power over Ethernet to drive the cameras. You need fiber optic backbone. You need a significant amount of infrastructure to make this functional. And I think Todd mentioned that earlier. So it's, so is, so I would include them in the conversation because I think the same vendors and the same process does both. So even if at the end we decide to take them apart, I would, I would propose that we do the study together and, uh, and then make sure that they have the adequate, not just the end device, but the, the, the backhaul equipment. And then I would actually probably uh, suggest that whoever monitors our security system 7x24, we conclude the charter school in that contract if they agree so that there's better policy and give them our policies, better policy, better protection. Nobody's snooping around. We're doing it. We're getting what we want out of that security system. And they're part of a bigger organization. That would be that would what I would hope we, the conversation we have with them. So, oh. okay. Madam President, can I speak yes. to some of these other to what to the issues in general, or do you want to finish this one focused topic? No, I, uh, the charter for charter. Yeah, charter. Yes, go ahead. Okay, Unless thank there's you anybody much. else, because you are monopolized. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so. Let me let me let me go ahead and do that. No, go um, ahead, Ross. Go ahead. No, thank yes. you. I, yeah. You and I have been friends for too long for me to get. You know, I can too joke upset. with you. It's just you a can joke. absolutely. Um, Twenty years ago, Novato Unified School District uh, in a, um, host uh, agreed to host a charter school. Kim Galatolo and 
Smith, I think is the other woman's name, both local business people, both with kids in this town, both local and the charter school. And Nikki was around at this conversation. She's been around for the same 20 years I have. Uh, the partnership worked out really well. And in the process, Prop 39, we agreed um, after a lot of screaming and shouting that we would meet our obligation by bu basically buying the por portables. Uh, we provided the space and then and, and paid off the, the very expensive leases they had for the portables. Well, portables last about 20 years, something like that. I mean, they don't last 40, but um, and we, we took all the portables we had for the math department out of Novato High and got rid of them and replaced it with a permanent building. Um, these buildings have been there for 20 years and are and you can just look like at the list you don't even have to go out there you can see the floors the, the roof the sidings are all having issues i think it, so the question is what if these buildings fail if we have a roof failure for one of these buildings where do those children go since we have a duty as a district to house them where do they go I, I think the least expensive thing this district can do is put a roof on those buildings and go down this laundry list of costs, which in their case comes to $3 million. So is $3 million a lot of money or not a lot of money? I mean, we've talked about other big chunks of money. I, I did the same math Nikki did, and I said, how many kids are in the charter school? How many kids are in the Uni in NUSD altogether? charter school and staff, which is about 7,500, 7,800, something like that. And it comes to something like 3%. So if you take 3% of 222 million, it's a $6 million number. But we know elementary schools are less expensive to process, and we know they're only 20 years old portables, and we have some 50, 70, 80 year old olive school was built before the 50s. So I, th I think the three million dollars are asking for is an extraordinarily reasonable thing, and it allows them to be safely housed without us having to consider um, so solving their problem by buying new equipment or, or housing them on some other campus or doing something. I think this is this is the, the solution they prefer. I think it's the, just about the least expensive solution I could imagine of all the ways to meet our obligation in terms of providing a charter school housing and. We've only, we only have one charter school in Nevada. The others, we have been very um, focused on making sure the programs have high academic quality before we accept them. We accepted one and in fact turned it away. Um, this program has done a really good job for Nevada kids. Um, they've been great partners. And so my two cents for this is to find the $3 million to give them. I wouldn't do the $6 million math. I think it's not fair for an elementary school. So there's my thinking and Greg, you know, so there, there's the thought, my thought for the consider for you guys. Anybody want to weigh in on that? Trustee Gasson. I started wondering how much it is to get a new portable. Yeah, um, that's what I did too. I assume it's a lot more. So after hearing, I'll first say what I was going to say and then after hearing uh, Trustee Miller, so my first thought was I'd like to at least be able to say we can do some things for the charter school. And I know because some of this stuff is a little uncertain. We don't know yet about the safety stuff and the standards. So there's some, but at the same time, I think we should be able to like move forward with, with some things. And when I look at it from that perspective um, and also in alignment with what we're currently doing for our other school sites, I look at the new roofs. To me, that's without a doubt just needs to be um, handled. And then the security cameras with the reliable Wi-Fi. Since we're already working on that as a district, having that infrastructure in place seems like a, a no-brainer doing those two things. And then we could figure out the rest uh -huh. as it aligns with whatever we're doing elsewhere. Um, after hearing Trustee Millerick, um, I did quick math, which is not always good, and I've got new glasses on, so I'm still not used to them. But if you take, with the exception of the classroom cabinets and you look at just getting the portables um, it's like 1.1 1 .1 million yeah I okay I focus we, we focus on the structure a million dollars right so it's like a million dollars to upgrade which I think is it, it, unfortunately it takes out uh, some of the things that they ranked as a higher priority but we could also look at it that way if we figure it's about a million dollars to get the to get actual the actual buildings yeah into. which i think is important right so <laughs> yeah 
if you do, I just ran a, a, a cumulative total as you go through this. You get through um, reliable Wi-Fi, it's 1.2, just like you know, we already knew that. But um, you get through the priority threes, it's 1.4. Um, all the fours added up, they're 979, but minus the, the chalkboards is 929. Um, that's all structural, but that gets you to 2.4. And then after that, it's classroom technology, bottle filling, and shade structures that gets to the three. So Everybody's having to pinch their, pull their belt in a little bit. I don't mind if we, you know. Your your 2.4 doesn't need, like seem crazy to me. It seems like everybody's got to be able to tighten the belt a little bit. I am kind of curious. I'm still though. arguing for three, but I understand there's how much a, do a all new portables cost? Right now, about 186,000 per building. So 2.8 million for 14 of them. Yeah, I think it would be higher than that because you've got demolition costs and <coughs> hauling and yeah the. Which these are. This is starting to sound like a performing arts center at San Marin. <laughs> <laughs> performing arts center in Nevada High. Has, <laughs> has that been suggested? To has that conversation happened with the charter of replacing the portables or? Um, I think they, if I can speak for Nikki, they would be very happy with that. <laughs> can you say yeah. the amount again? What, how much is a new portable? Right now, about 186,000. And that includes installation. That includes installation. However, you've got um, your project cost, you have to consider demolition costs. Right. So three hundred thousand per per one per no, three to three point five million. million. Yeah. To do them all. Yeah. Oh, I was rounding up the one when you said you add on the other side. Okay, so three million to do. Okay. I thought when you were, I was taking the one eighty six, adding in the demolition and the the um, repairs. Okay. Nikki, um, how many are newer than twenty years old? Because you did there was a there was a separate buy. I remember that. So. One brand new. A long time. And you have how many total? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. All right. Thanks. I, yes. I, I like Todd's recommendation. I think we pay him a lot of money to not have us do stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, you know, that just changed my, yeah. 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 Yes. I uh, would trustee, actually, trustee Pickus and then uh, Trustee Lametta. Um, and I was just going to, you know, if we're just, I, I, I'm really interested in this idea as well. I think it makes more sense if we're going to invest in something to actually invest in new things. Um, but also just... What, what's going through my head also is that some of the things like security cameras and the perimeter fencing and the TK play structure, those priority ones are not related to portables. So if we were interested in getting new portables, um, their number one priorities are not actually included in that cost. So potentially it's 3.5 plus the other pieces at the top, which are a part of our potential security plan, which are also really important. So. Um, and this is a very intriguing idea to me, and I just want to make sure, as we're thinking about it, that we're not omitting those other needs at the top that are not a part of the portables. Okay. To be clear, it's 3 to 3.5 plus 1.2. 1.2 represents the top four lines plus the next two. Well, the roofs come off. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. You're, you're, I just, I didn't you're see right that about yet. which we're doing. You just so missed $400,000. So you have a board, I think, that isn't somewhat interested in this replacement of the portables versus fixing repairing them okay um if if i'm not speak up if i'm not uh, so we can get more information i think on we that need more information on that yeah um, 
Okay. I mean, we that's our obligation. Is that correct on their facilities? Is there well, I wouldn't say the obligation is to give them brand new buildings. The obligation <laughs> is to house them. To house them, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Our obligation is to give them housing um, on par with what we give the district students. Yes. That's okay. how the law is written. I should, yeah. <laughs> I, I like this. Okay. <laughs> He's going to move in. So I think we need to have the staff go back and do uh, some more work on replacing reportables, um, see what's salvageable out there and what isn't, but it sounds like it's a, um, <clears throat> sounds like all of them need to be. I, yeah, I think yeah. that's the smart The other move. thing is where do we, where does that money come from once it comes back? Two balances sitting there and then there's two million sitting somewhere else. Yeah, there's there's a there's a there's a little bit and of flexibility. Remember, the on balances this. have to cover any extra safety for the district sites, and the balances have to cover the um, added uh, surface on the tracks. Yeah, so we've added some big ticket items to this puzzle, mm -hmm. and Lois just expressed those three things. So, Can we say that one more time. Yeah, the, we're talking. So about the the, the added. Um, the higher quality tracks, which I think we came up with um, plus 100, so 875 total. If, yeah. yeah, 750 to 850, depending what we do with the fencing. And then the safety, added safety, that is not covered in any allocation right now at all of our sites, lights, fencing, um, any additional locks that we want. Um, the cameras are included, but not the other safety. On the other side of that coin, pardon me, Madam President, on the other side of that coin, you've identified some other sources of revenue that are, are potential for us in this conversation in the next five years. Five to ten years, nothing's guaranteed. He's talking about state reimbursement for things we filed for. They have... Um, Melissa reminded me today they've totally changed the audit process for that money. We have very high, fiery hoops to jump through mm. to get this money. They have made it much more difficult. Doesn't mean we won't get it, but um, nothing's guaranteed. And, and I would not recommend spending it before it arrives. I agree, but you also <laughs> identified Fund 25 was another source. Fund 25 is only meant for expanding populations. It's what we get from developer fees, which is why I justified um, using it for TK, because that's an expanding population. Thank you. Okay, uh, for the and then for so just the the portables, but then the security will all fall under the now the full security assessment that you're doing. Yes. Okay. So so my sense. Hold pardon. on, Trustee Matt. Yep. Yep. Ahead, raise his oh, hand. Yep. Well, actually, I was going to move on. So if we're still talking about this. I what am I missing? Somebody? I think, hey, oh. You've got to go like this. <laughs> this doesn't work. <laughs> oh, I had called Abby, and then I didn't go to you. Okay, yeah. No. Yes. All right. Well, no, I was just going to move on to address Louise, what Louise brought up. I think it's um, there, to be. I think we need to better understand. The cost of doing something like that because this is something that's been coming up yeah I know. heavily I was say that. and safe route to schools <laughs> yeah. has been all over this I don't, if anybody knows the, the the legend that is the san jose traffic jam every morning <laughs> it's bad and the city might even want to help here to be honest um because it's going to help them tremendously um but it's not traffic from southern marin it's it's ha more than half of the San Jose population coming from Loma Verde yeah. and from Hamilton. They all go up Ignacio Boulevard, and if they could just go in and out uh, on Ignacio Boulevard, it makes a huge difference. Todd, can you come up and speak to that? I, I, I know you've heard this conversation before here, I think, sure. in the past. Um, pick up and drop off is one of more, the more complicated issues, and that will need to run through cities, parking, and traffic. Um, and through probably city council for approval because you're rerouting the, the, the route through the school. It all ha also has to go through California Department of Education. So it's, it's a fairly complex process. Um, I'm not saying it's not doable, um, but it, you're probably looking at a year of entitlements before you can get into construction. Mm. Um, you're probably looking 
parking lot work, pickup and drop off work around the $50 a square foot range. So um, you're probably 700 to a million um, to do a, a pickup and drop off loop there in and, and back out. And again, heavy caveat that it has to get past California Department of Ed and then through city entitlement. Could you, I think that information, sorry, if I'm jumping in front of you, okay. I think we need a, a memo or something documented that can get to the school site. I think the PT, I'm, there are several, and like Safe Rasta School needs to know that. I think they need to understand what goes into changing all of that and adding that under, because this conversation has happened multiple times and I don't think, I don't know that they understand, and everybody's changing. Principal has changed, PTA changes. Um, so I think letting them know what goes into that project, it would be super helpful. And, and a lot of it depends on how cooperative the city of Novato is right. with regard to it. So one of the few things that, that cities have input on um, into school district projects, typically we, we are strictly DSA. That's our entitling body and we don't have to deal with the city's oh, regulations. Right. And, and um, But when, as soon as you start doing curb cuts and mm -hmm. impacting traffic flow patterns, uh, then they get a say in it. And a lot of times um, that involves them requesting offsite work, traffic signals, uh, stop signs, crosswalks, uh, signalized crosswalks, and that drives the cost of the project up even higher. So it's a, it's a significant undertaking. I will say this, I do believe they are very motivated to do something, but I do hear your concern that they might use that as, oh, we'll put in a stoplight now. No, we're not paying for that. So, yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I, I think, Debbie, beyond just I don't know, giving, something the, needs to be... well, giving the site awareness, yeah. which I get, but they don't, they're, they're just say, okay, fine, let's do it. Yeah. I think what really needs to happen is the conversation needs to be opened up with the city. And see how the city reacts. Yeah, they react. And see if yeah. they're ready to, to jump in on it and how much and let them lead the way, potentially. Okay. Um, we'll I'll we'll bring it circle back around in agenda planning for that one. Um, we're on a little bit of a time crunch here for the board. You know, we're off to a. Are we in a place where? Uh, these balances with all of the suggestions we've thrown out there and changes a little You've bit. Spent them three or four times. I think. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think we need to get to these. No. Yeah. Yes. No. Okay. I just want to make sure. Do, Left for future I, discussion. Is Keep the perfect. board good? And then I'm going to check with staff and that they understand where we're, where we've left you. Whole list of things. Yes. Okay. I, and I think as Prof uh, prior trustee Harris has pointed out, this probably positions us well for the in the short term. We have. A lot of questions to answer before we want to go to the community in any big way. So, Nikki, I just want to circle. You didn't. You probably you're going back with really well, somewhat good. You know, we're going to look at all of your portables and and maybe do better than what than just replacing. So, I hope uh, your community understands that. You were maybe probably hoping to leave with a little bit more information than that. <laughs> um, we're we're not necessarily pushing it. But we're going to make it hopefully get to a better place. Am I correct in assuming we have, um, because cameras are number one on their list, we will continue to involve them in the process as we move forward with elementary cameras? Yeah. Yes. And, okay. Yeah. And we're following, we're, you're going to, my understanding, pardon, may I, Trustee? Yes. Uh, yes. We, we, my understanding is we're going to quickly figure out the viability of, new equipment, new physical structure versus old, and come back with some numbers pretty quickly for them to think about, and for us to th How think about. How do quickly? Um, let me see if today, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm in. Everything is urgent, no matter what. <laughs> well, I don't want to leave them out in the lurch to think they're not being considered. We are active, I guess the word to say is, we, you, we, you are going to actively review the possibility of Nikki physical new buildings. Nikki and I will continue to yes. talk, okay. yeah. Yeah. That's I'll what she's going back with is maybe all new buildings instead of a repair job, maybe. Okay. Trustee Gasson. So if I can summarize where I think what we're doing. Yeah. So 
figuring out the the portables, getting a handle on that cost. I would keep going. I think it's already been said, but I, making sure that the security cameras in that process because that's already boat sailing. Um, and then what I would like to see when it comes back to us, whatever that may be, is the um, impact because where I get challenged by going through page after page is going back to this and that. What I would like to see is the the numbers that of you know these numbers that we've been discussing on what the cost is including the field changes so we have like a list and we can plug and play where okay if we do this then there's no money um and also with that, that in mind that um 25 account fund 25, 25, 25. um where i'm headed with thinking with that is we can knock some of the like if we can use that we can do the tk play structures or whatever like something written to highlight all the things that we've discussed in the many different ways and then when we have that i think that's super easy to have and say okay we can or can't do this because of this oh also i'm sorry the the checklist of the the elementary is what who needs what the standards yeah like who because i know some sites already have the shade structures they don't um so figuring out what what who needs what so we really only settled on Hamilton to leave it. Yeah, not even. Oh, we gave direction. Well, you you settled. Oh no, you didn't even settle on the program contingency, did you? On the contingency, that was the other. Yeah. Let's go. But you know, I don't. I the these other items, those three items below um, the allocations. So the five percent remaining budget consider restoring program reserve to five percent so that was between eight and nine hundred thousand this is on your next steps page the last page and, and can i add to that if that isn't high enough what you're going to be faced with is when we come to you with a higher cost it's going to be okay what on right. the list is yeah. disappearing i think we need to authorize we have this to have something to i agree with the that. current yeah. we need to authorize to allow them to increase yeah. okay yeah. Thank you. And then the IT, do you want any idea on that? Um, Your we, recommendation was we to- We don't want to upset a certain member of the board, so that's why that's earmarked the way it is, to make sure that we're safe. That's a joke. We, have, we, have, we don't have a, we've been waiting. The uncertainty of the cost of the cameras is still in the future. Every time I ask, I, I get a conversation that we're going to have it in the future, and we're still having it in the future, which is fine. It's going to get done. I'm well, committed. Well, I don't think the cameras will be covered with this. Well, the cameras, the, the, are in the the cameras depend upon the IT infrastructure to run. The, the cameras are powered by the IT yes. infrastructure. The cameras are connected to the IT infrastructure. So, so. But the, the money for all of that is in a separate, separate budget, a separate pot. I this is just holding for any it's left over this after is, yeah. the other things have been considered. Right. So you heard my concern. If there's if the, if, if if you guys believe, and well, have no, we have covered. concern also that there will be things in the future in the IT realm um, because those things wear out, and we well, it's very important so, to so, keep that running. So I'm concerned, but we also have E-rate money that's coming through that's allowing us to do a significant amount of construction outside of the bond. But the, it's a 60-40 split. So it, right, so if this, is the, if this is the lo the local share for the 60-40 right. split, right. then I would like to talk about it more, but I'm happy to leave it there okay. for right now. But I, that doesn't mean it's needed, it just means I, I don't know, and if you don't know, then nobody knows. Okay, so we're going to recommend that it stays right where it right, is. Right now, and, and okay, it, thank it, you. it's available. All right. Yeah. And then we did not get to the Ferd Mace, which I don't think we should be. The remaining, provide direction on remaining deferred maintenance projects. Oh, no, that's, that's not. We're not no, going to go there. You, well, everything you've discussed. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, that's yes. where I'm no. at. <laughs> All good. All right. All right Stay you. put, trustees. Just hold on. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs>